Hello viewers, welcome to the program on dynamic framing. Can you see me? No, but now I suppose you are able to see me. This has been possible because the cameraman has now included me in the camera frame. In this program, I will discuss with you the various techniques of framing in television. To begin with, let us understand what a frame is. Here you see the cutout of a frame. Now you can see my face through this cutout also called a frame. The director uses this frame to decide which of the available visual elements are to be included in the frame or to be excluded from the frame. This frame is in the ratio of 4 horizontal and 3 vertical as you can see. This is kept so because the aspect ratio of television screen is usually 4 is to 3. Usually all the visuals which you see on a television screen are captured with help of camera. The visual information is captured by the frame in the terms of shots depicting different image sizes. To demonstrate, now you can see my image getting magnified on the screen. Conversely, now you can see that my image size is reducing and showing more of the background or surroundings. The director determines how much to show. He also determines how big or small to show depending upon the requirement of the scene. Closer shots highlight the object and enhance its impact on the viewer's mind. Whereas, small image size reveals more of the background or surroundings of the object, thus reducing the impact of the object on the viewer. How much we show in a frame is also known as field of view of a shot. Let us understand the various types of shots which are commonly used. This can be described using a human figure because most of our programs deal with human beings. When we see the full human figure in the frame, this is called a long shot denoted as LS. Shot above the knee is called medium long shot or MLS. Shot above the vest is called mid shot or MS. Shot above the lower chest is called medium close up or MCU. A shot above the upper chest is called close up or CU. A shot showing face details like eyes, nose, lips, etc. is called big close up. It is also called tight close up. A shot showing isolated details of eyes, lips, etc. is called extreme close up denoted as ECU. Let us look at the various shots once again for the purpose of better understanding. I 
I would like to clarify here that it is always not necessary to define various shots with respect to human figure only. For example, in a technical program, the emphasis is more on the equipments, their working and operating procedures rather than the presenter. Thus, some of the shots used could be long shot of the presenter with the equipment, say CRO. Close-up of a CRO. Big close-up of a CRO screen. While the cameraman offers various types of shots as desired by the director, he has to take care of the framing of the objects within the frame. The direction of static shot can be indicated by shots such as frontal shot, three quarter frontal shot, profile shot, rear shot. There are some other terminologies which are used commonly by the professionals in media to describe some other types of shots and compositions like when the camera frames one person it is called a single shot when two persons are composed in a frame it is called a two shot when three persons are framed it is called three shot when the number of persons increases three we may call it a group shot Another type of shot could be the one when the frontal shot of one person is recorded keeping the shoulder of the other person in the foreground. This is called over the shoulder shot denoted as OSS. This is also called point of view shot. With this type of shot a sense of depth is created in the frame. It is easier for the cameraman to frame objects which are stationary, but it requires lot of skill and practice to frame the moving objects. I will demonstrate you certain examples of framing static objects as well as moving objects. Let us begin with framing of static objects. Sufficient headroom should be given while framing a shot of a person. The headroom should neither be too small nor too large. The shot composed should be aesthetically pleasant. Always frame the profile close up giving proper looking space also called nose room. This composition does not look balanced. It suggests that another person can enter the frame from the left. To balance the composition, the person will have to turn his face to other side. Never frame a person cutting at natural joints like neck, elbows, ankles, etc. Now let us see certain situations where the subject in the frame is moving. While framing close-ups, cameraman should be careful enough to include the hand and head movements. While framing a moving person always provide a walking room in front of the person. Let us see what happens when the walking room is not provided. Does it not look awkward? When a person sits or gets up, avoid cutting his head or body. 
anticipate the movement of the person as per the demand of the scene. How do you appreciate this composition in the frame? Is it not looking awkward? This can be corrected either by moving background object or by moving the position of the camera. Always remember to frame the visual information in the safe action area of the screen as about 10% of the edge information is lost while the program reaches the TV receiver. Always compose the graphics in safe title area. Finally, while framing the shots, keep in the mind the rule of thirds. Frame the scene in such a way that the important objects fall on the intersecting lines while we divide the screen into three equal horizontal and vertical parts. Let us see another composition which looks aesthetically pleasant and has been achieved by using the rule of thirds. Well friends, I hope you would have liked this presentation on framing and composition. Do not forget that you can master these framing techniques only by practice and hard work. Goodbye.